In this video, we solve problem number four from quiz number seven in the fall 2020 semester in the elementary differential equations class. This is a single problem corresponding to standard L25, which is solving simple IVPs with the Laplace transformation. We solve IVPs with the Laplace transformation in another standard as well. But in this first standard, our differential equation will always have constant coefficients in the right hand side will be relatively simple. So there won't be any direct deltas over there. There won't be um, any convolutions within our problem. We're just going to solve a simple um, constant coefficient differential equation subject to initial conditions prescribed at um, t equals zero. Um, so we start this in the same way that we start every other problem. We introduce our notation. So we let the Laplace transform of little y equal big Y. So that way everybody knows what that big Y of S represents. And then we take the Laplace transformation or take the Laplace transform of both sides of the differential equation and set those equal to each other. So um, the Laplace transform is a linear operator. So we get the Laplace transform of y double prime plus eight times the Laplace transform of y prime plus 16 times the Laplace transform of y equals negative 75 times the Laplace transform of e to the at. So that's what we have here. And then the Laplace transform of the nth derivative always has n plus one terms. Since this is the second derivative, we have three terms. The first term starts with an s squared, then we have a minus s to the first, and then we have a minus s to the zero. And then those powers of s are multiplied by the Laplace transform of little y of t, which is um, denoted by big Y of s, minus little y at zero and little y prime at zero. Then here we've got eight times the Laplace transform of y prime. I wanted to make sure that, that you saw this. Since the Laplace transform of a derivative always has more than one term, it always has n plus one terms for the nth derivative. I wanted to make sure to put that in parentheses because all of that is being multiplied by that eight. So we've got eight times Laplace transform of the first derivative, which has two terms. So we've got an s to the first on that first term and an s to the zero on the second term. Then we'll have y of s and little y at zero for those um, factors multiplying the powers of s. And then we have 16 times the Laplace transform of y of t, which is big y of s by definition. And then the Laplace transform of negative 75 times e to the at is negative 75 times the Laplace transform of e to the at. Well, that's one over s minus a, where a equals one. So we have one over s minus one. So we're here now and we want to get y of s by itself. So the first thing that I would do after I take the Laplace transform of both sides of the differential equation is replace my y of zero and y prime of zero with negative one and negative 11. So let's do that. That was given to us in our problem statement. So we have s squared times y of s minus s times y of zero. y of zero was negative one. So we're subtracting a negative s and we're multiplying by negative one. So that means we're adding s. And then we're subtracting y prime at zero. So we're subtracting a negative 11. So that means we're adding 11 there. Then we're adding eight times s times y of s. And then we have a negative one times a negative one. So it's gonna be a positive one. And then we distribute that eight to that. So we'll have an eight there plus 16 y of s equals negative 75 over um, s minus a, where a equals one, which is s minus one. So now you've got this equation. It's just an algebraic equation involving um, y um, and s, and we want to solve for the Laplace transform of our solution now. So we want to solve for y of s, we want to get that by itself. To do, th to do that, excuse me, I will group my y of s terms. I've got three of them. I've got s squared times y of s plus 8s times y of s plus 16 times y of s. So I'll group those together and factor out my y of s. And then on the right hand side, I still have negative 75 over s minus 1. And then I want to get these guys on the other side. So I'll subtract s from both sides, 
and I'll subtract 19 from both sides in order to do that. Now, this is um, s plus 4 squared. That's how that factors. So if I want to get y of s by itself, I will divide both sides by s plus 4 squared. So those guys reduce, and we end up with this. Now, we do have a complex fraction on the right-hand side. To make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to think of this division differently. Rather than taking this and dividing by s plus 4 squared, I'm going to multiply by 1 over s plus 4 squared. So remember, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half, right? And the same thing is true here. I think I'll factor out the negative 1 as well. So this is s uh, plus 19 times negative 1 all divided by s plus 4 squared. Now for this first expression, the negative 75 over s minus 1 times s plus 4 squared, I'll use partial fraction decomposition for that because I don't have an entry in my table that looks like that. Now this I can actually simplify myself just by adding a well-chosen 0. I really wish there was an s plus 4 in the numerator because then if I had an s plus 4 in the numerator, I could simplify it with the s plus 4 squared in the denominator. So I think I'm just going to make that happen. We can make it into exactly what we want it to be. And that's legal as long as we compensate for that. So I'm adding 4 so that it looks like an s plus 4 so that it will reduce with that s plus 4 squared in the denominator. And I can do that. I can just add a 4 as long as I also subtract the 4. Then if we distribute, we get this. We have a negative 1 times s plus 4 over s plus 4 squared. And then over here, we're going to have a 15 times a negative 1, so it's a negative 15 over s plus 4 squared. I have a rule for that in my table. If I reduce one of those s plus 1s, I've got 1 over s minus a. That's also in my table. The only one that's not in my table is this expression here. So for this guy, I want to use partial fraction decomposition. And I'm doing all of that because I'm trying to get back to y of t. I've got a linear factor. So I'll have a constant over that linear factor here. And then I have a repeated linear factor. So I'll have a constant over that linear factor plus a constant over that linear factor squared because that's an s plus 4 squared since that exponent is 2. We get two terms in the decomposition that correspond to that one. We have s plus 4 to the first, s plus 4 squared. If that was s plus 4 cubed, we'd have a third term. It'd be d over s plus 4 cubed. That's how it works. Um, but this is only squared, so we get two terms from that. And now our goal is to find the values of a, b, and c that cause this expression to equal this expression. Well, in order to find those, we always take this partial fraction decomposition and we multiply by the LCD and simplify. then the denominators will all reduce because you've multiplied by the LCD. And we have this. We have the original numerator, which is negative 75, equals a times the quantity s plus 4 squared plus b times s minus 1 times s plus 4 plus c times s minus 1. Now we want to solve this equation for a, b, and c. And the way we typically do that is we choose to let s equal the values that will cause each of these factors to be zero. That gets us started. Um, 
So s minus four, will, or excuse me, s plus four will equal zero when s is equal to negative four. So on the left-hand side, I have negative 75. Um, this will be a times zero, because negative four plus four is zero. So a times zero squared is a times zero, which is zero. If s is equal to negative four, this is b times zero. The only term that's not zero is this c times this s minus one. So we'll have c times negative four minus one, which is negative five. So we'll have c equals uh, 75 divided by five. Is that 15? Yeah, that's 15. Okay, so we've got that. And now I'll choose another value of s that makes a different factor zero. S minus one will be zero when s is equal to one. So we'll have negative 75 equals a times one plus four is five, five squared is 25. And if s is equal to one, this is b times zero plus c times zero. So we have a equals negative 75 over 25, which is negative three. And I don't know the value of b. To find the value of b, I pick any s value I want. And remember that a and c are equal to 15 or negative three and 15 respectively. One value of s that's really easy to evaluate anything at is zero. So I'll substitute in s equals zero. If s equals zero, this becomes negative 75 equals a times four squared, which is 16, plus b times negative one times four, plus c times negative one. Now a is negative three, negative three times 16 is negative 48. We don't know what b is, so this is just negative four b, and this is 15 times negative one, so negative 15. So if I add 15 to both sides, I've got a negative 60 here. And then if I add 48 to both sides, I get a negative 12. So B must be equal to negative 12 divided by negative four, which is three. Okay, great. So if A is negative three and B is equal to three, I meant to use red, and C is equal to 15, then this plus this plus this is equal to this guy right here. So we can write y of s using these expressions now. So y of s is equal to this. It's a over s plus or s minus one, so that's negative three over s minus one, plus b, which is three over s plus four, plus c, which is 15 over s plus four squared. That's a partial fraction decomposition for this first term. And then we're subtracting one over s plus four and we're subtracting 15 over s plus four squared. And that's convenient. Because these two terms reduce. And then we just end up with a negative three over s minus one and three of these minus one of those is gonna leave us with two of those. So y of t is the inverse transform of this guy. And one, the inverse transform of one over s minus a is e to the a t. So you can bring that constant of negative three down and then the inverse transform of one over s minus one, that's where a is equal to one, is e to the one t or e to the t. Then I'll bring my two down. Then we'll have a one over s plus four that matches this pattern with a equals negative four. So that will give us an e to the negative four t. And that's my y of t. Now, we have not confirmed it yet, but my claim is that if we evaluate this at t equals zero, this 
since this is the differential equation we're trying to solve, we plug in t equals zero here. We have negative three plus two. That's going to be negative one. That's right. Now, if we take the derivative of this and then plug in zero, we should get negative 11. You should check that out if you want to check. Then if you take the second derivative of this, add eight times the first derivative of this and add 16 times this function, you're going to get negative 75 e to the t, provided all the steps are correct in this method. Um, so that is how we solve problem number four from quiz number seven from the fall 2020 semester. I'll see you in the next video and we'll talk about the quiz problems that cover standard L26.